Stroke is a time-sensitive disease. Time is critical because with every passing minute, there are millions of neurons that are dying, and there are also time-sensitive therapies that today are mostly focused on reperfusion, opening up the blood vessel, restoring blood flow. What bleeding looks like, hemorrhage looks like, on an MRI is very different than what ischemic stroke looks like. It gives us information about other features, which can be important. Not just location, but also size and volume. It's a magnetic resonance image that you're developing. It's all powered by a very high field magnet. And that magnet is uh, what requires the secure bunker location. What you'd love to do is be able to use an MRI and take pictures over and over again, or take the MRI and actually apply it in any setting where patients live, right? It's a paradigm shift. You're taking an MRI to a sick patient versus taking a sick patient to the MRI. So the fundamental gap there um, was the development of something called low field, right? Use high field. But why, is, is there a way that you can generate these images using a much lower field? We started working with a bunch of different folks and seeing if we can get low field imaging to the bedside. We basically started working together on developing this tool. Over the course of the last year, we have been imaging just dozens and dozens of patients that present in our emergency department or our neuroscience intensive care unit. And now that you're able to do that, you can start to think about, well, you know, what, what's the limit to that? Why can't this MRI machine go into the back of an ambulance? Why can't it go into an outpatient clinic? Why can't you have 10 clinic rooms that are all outfitted with MRIs? This is one of those sort of look under the microscope for the first time moments. No one's ever taken pictures of a brain hemorrhage at a low field before. We're already starting to work on ways in which we can reconstruct, use machine learning algorithms to maybe tell us about not just what we see in the pictures based on visual inspection, but also to glean information that we may not naturally see. If you just looked at all the people that theoretically could have a portable MRI and all the neuroimages that could result, you're sort of democratizing MRI technology. And as you do that, and you have these huge data sets, the amount that you could probably learn using all the advances in data science, I mean, that is just incredible.